Intel is in the news these days for all the wrong reasons. But if you thought that the foofbug is a new security flaw, then I have to disappoint you. The foofbug is an old design flaw that affects all CPUs built on the P5 microarchitecture. So Intel Pentium, Pentium MMX and Pentium Overdrive processors. The bug was discovered in 1997 and describes an invalid instruction in the x86 microarchitecture. You probably heard of other bugs that affected the original Pentium processor. The most well known is most likely the FDIF bug. This bug affected floating point calculations and led to incorrect results when dividing certain pairs of high precision numbers. Our foof bug on the other hand will crash the entire system. But don't worry, we are not going to deep dive in machine code or assembly language. All I want to do in this video is try to trigger this bug. I will use a system with an Intel Pentium 200, MS-DOS 7.1 and Windows 98 second edition. All we need to remember is the hexadecimal encoding of our offending instruction, because it will show up in all the examples we will see today. And now you also see where the foof bug gets its name from. Ok, I will start with Windows 98. I had to download a C compiler to compile our offending instruction. Um, I used Code Warrior for that, I just found a a tutorial online how to write some C code for Windows 98. It's not that easy anymore. But you could use any other C compiler if you are familiar with this topic. I'm sorry that I'm not covering this bug in detail. And the reasons are I don't understand the topic in depth, so I don't want to give false information. You can always look up information about this foof bug online if you want to. And second of all, if I try to explain something in depth, machine code, hex editor and so on, I'm pretty sure I will lose the attention span of so many people. So I just want to reproduce this bug in three different environments. We are going to use a C compiler in Windows. We are going to use a simple BAT file under DOS. And then we are using another way in DOS to create a executable file using numpad, just typing the instructions via the numpad into a file. And I think this will be the easiest way how you could reproduce this on your own without the requirement to type too much text or to have a compiler somewhere. So for Windows, I downloaded a IDE called Code Warrior. This is a tool that I found in a book that was just recommending to use this IDE for coding in C. As you can imagine, coding in Windows 98 is not that easy anymore. This operating system is very old by now. So let's create a new project and I need a C console application. Uh, we have to select a folder here. We'll just write it directly on our C drive and I will call it, of course, foof with zero, obviously. Okay. Now we get our files here, source. Uh, so this is a normal C application. Uh, with a main function that goes in there and if we would execute this application we would get the text hello world in our command line. Uh, we can try this quickly. I think this is this one here is make, yes. Uh, let me just see, let's put it for release. Make. Okay, what's the problem? Why are you not making anything? Oh. <laughs> okay, so somehow the mouse is sensitive through the buttons. I actually highlight the window. Yeah, I noticed this before. Uh, okay, so it's not that easy to code under Windows 98. Make. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so it compiles and it makes a much larger file than I would like to have because we could open it and see what exactly happened. But it doesn't matter. Windows is just... I want to prove to you that it also breaks Windows. The foof bug was later on mitigated through operating system updates. So it probably is not the case for Windows 98 second edition. Okay, so here is our Hello World application. This works. Now let's go ahead and modify our code file and trigger the foof bug. For this, I will get rid of everything that is in here. And yeah, let's just write from scratch. 
Unfortunately, I have to read this off my notes here, but it is funny because it's just one line. One line is going to trigger the foof bug. So we have to create a char array, I guess, but with a main function. So this is the entry point of our program. I didn't know that if it's not a function, this will still get triggered, but apparently this is the case. And now we have to specify our character array. 0x f0, this is our foo. Next is 0x 0f, foof. Now we have to continue with some instructions. I think this, if you look up the documentation about the foof bug, one is locked, compare and something, and then you go into the e AX, I think the accumulator register is going to compare something with the data. So EAX and EDX, what I remember. So it's quite complex. Let's continue with the code C7. And the last character in our array is 0x C8. And this is it. This is our instruction to trigger the foof bug. So now let's see if this compiles. Make. And we are compiling. And I think it did. Did it? I think it finished. Yeah. So let's see. And when was this made? Do I see a date? Yes. So what do you think is going to happen when I open this application? Our application just consists of one line and these are exactly the hex codes that we have seen before. F0, 0F, foof, C7, C8. I think this one also can uh, take other values, but this is our application. Now, what do you think will happen when I execute this application? Let's see. My mouse completely stopped and the numlock also no longer responds. This system is frozen. We have just triggered the foof bug. <laughs> it's crazy. So what I understand is the CPU is trying to wait for another instruction with this locked read. There should follow a locked write and it waits for that instruction. Since it never comes, the CPU is in some kind of a deadlock as I understand this. But if you have more details, you can please write this in the comments. Also, if I say anything wrong, please correct me. But yeah, so we triggered the foof bug, a design flaw in the Pentium, Pentium MMX and Pentium Overdrive CPUs. So now the only thing I can do is I have to hit reset. And now we will go into DOS and try the same thing. So now we are in DOS and there is a simple but script that is a little bit unfortunate to type. So I prepared this ahead of time. So we don't have to, you don't have to watch me type all this text. And to be honest, I also don't know exactly what all this stuff means. But the important thing is we again have something similar to our foof code here. It's just a little bit mixed up. And I think this has to do with little endian versus big endian. I think so. If you look at each of those hexadecimal pairs, there are two hexadecimals for each of those pairs, and you have a comma that separates them. If you would flip them, so you have F0, and then you take the one on the left to the right. So this one would go to the right of this, so you would see 0F. Then you have your foof. And then you have C7 here, and then you take the C8 and move it to the right, then you would exactly get this, what we've seen before. So I think this has to do with big endian, little endian encoding, but this is how this code actually works. And then it does some other stuff and then it tries to execute it. So what we can do now is we can exit out of this. We don't want to save. And we just try foof.but. And let's see what happens. And we get some output and my system is again stuck. It doesn't respond. The numlock is completely frozen. So now with this bot file, 
you can test your retro system if it suffers from the foof bug. What I understand is that Cyrex, AMD and maybe other flavors of CPUs are not affected. It only affects Intel CPUs up to Pentium Overdrive CPUs. Pentium 2 CPUs are no longer affected as far as I know. So yeah, this is the second way of triggering a foof bug without the need of having a C compiler. It's much easier, but I will show you now the third method, which is the easiest. Okay, so what we can do now is we can execute a command called copy con and we will call it f00f.com. And now we can enter instructions from our numpad. It has to be the numpad. It will not work with the normal uh, numbers that you have above the letters. So what you have to do is you have to press the Alt key and then you have to type in the following combination. 240, release the Alt key, press the Alt key again. 15, release the Alt key, press it again. 199, release the Alt key, press it again. 200, done. Now press F6 and enter. And we're done. And it created a file. So if we check, there is a foof file. There should be a foof file. Let's see. There foof.com. Yes, there is a foof.com file and it only has four bytes. Now let's see what happens when we execute it. So as you can see here, you still see that my numpad is working absolutely fine. But now if I call foof, I'll switch numpad back on and okay. Numlock no longer responding. So this is another way. I think this is the easiest way to get the foof bug triggered on your system. And it's a very tiny file. You can create this and move it around to other systems and see if your system is affected. It would be very interesting to see if AMD and Cyrix CPUs are affected. Based on my research, they are not affected, but you can try it on your systems. So yes, uh, this is the foof bug. Let me know what you think about it and did you know about this? And of course, I would be very interested to hear if you tried this on your retro machine and if your system crashed or not. So let me know. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. And a big thanks to all my Patreons. Bye bye.